Welcome back. Futures are indicating a pretty good rally at the start of trading this morning. Take a look. Dow futures up 750 points right now amid easing coronavirus fears this morning. The death toll in New York and other areas have shown a slight decline. But health officials are still warning that the toughest days are ahead. In fact, the next two weeks will be horrific, said the president. Some Wall Street analysts saying that we could see stocks retest recent lows. Joining us right now is the Bonson Group founder, managing partner David Bonson. And David, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Let me get your take first on the backdrop, because I've got a cornerstone macro report right here in my hands. And Nancy Lazar has been great on the economy. And she is expecting a sharp contraction in the second quarter. Uh, GDP, she says, will come in a contraction of 25 percent in the second quarter. She's expecting a contraction in the third quarter of 2 percent. But then by the fourth quarter, she's expecting a little bit of a rebound. How do you see the backdrop right now? Do you agree with those numbers? And what does that mean for investing? I don't agree with Nancy's numbers. That doesn't mean she's wrong. It just means like Goldman, like Morgan, like UBS and all the macro strategists like Cornerstone, they're making the number up out of thin air because the variables are so wide and so diverse. There's no way to actually handicap right now what the number will end up being. However, the good news is it doesn't matter. The market knows full well the second quarter GDP number is going to be terrible. Negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. It's all the same thing for the stock market. It's a horrible second quarter number. And the question for the stock market with that fully baked in is the third quarter and the fourth quarter, the shape of the recovery, more V-shape, more U-shape, or as we kind of think at the Bonson Group, it's going to be a little bit of both. There's going to be some sectors that come back strong, some sectors that take more time. Well, wait a second. I, I don't know that you could say she's coming up with this number out of thin air. She's actually coming up with it from a model that she puts together. She's expecting right. consumer spending to be down 30 percent. She's expecting yeah. CapEx spending to be down 35 percent. Inventories to be down uh, one, uh, uh, one point. She's expecting government spending to be up 8 percent. So she's got her models in terms of where she comes up with the 25 percent contraction. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that more companies right now are suspending their stock buyback programs in order to save cash. That's taking away another pillar of support for the struggling stock market amid coronavirus. That's an important one, right? I mean, most of those companies are in the hotel, energy, airline and banking sector. But that's been a major support for this market. They're buying back their stocks and now they're suspending it. And what about this news today that Jamie Dimon says, look, if things get extreme, sure, we would consider suspending our dividend at J.P. Morgan. Well, again, there's three different things there. As far as Nancy's model, I, you're right. She's plugging into a model. My point is the inputs into the model. How does one know how much consumer spending drops in the second quarter when we don't know when the country is okay. going to reopen? Parts of the country could reopen in two weeks. Parts might not reopen for two months. So that the models themselves have a lot of variability. But as far as the stock buyback I thing, there was that. something so interesting in that Wall Street Journal article. Um, it is one of the biggest fallacies people say that the stock market has a pillar of support from buybacks. That own article pointed out that stock buybacks were $100 billion less in 2019 than 2018. Well, the stock market was down in 2018, and it was up huge in 2019. The pricing of the stock market is not related to the buyback level. It's related to the overall profit level and the multiple we put on those profits. And what Jamie said was really important about JP Morgan. He was reaffirming the dividend, saying, of course, we would cut it if we had had to, and the Fed's stress test said so, but our own stress test and our own uh, balance sheet strength is saying we're not going to need to. He was defending J.P. Morgan's ability to continue paying that dividend. Yeah, just to be clear, the companies, uh, this is their uh, Jamie's uh, annual letter, and he said, we assume the future will include, quote, unquote, a bad recession combined with some financial stress, similar to the financial crisis of 2008. Diamond also said that it should be expected that earnings will be down meaningfully in 2020. And he said that under an extremely adverse scenario, the board would likely consider suspending the dividend, David. That, that's right. And, and so, again, I read the full letter. What Jamie is saying is right now the dividend does not need to be cut with all the numbers they have. And if the numbers were to get to a point, first of all, they're regulated by the Fed. They're not going to be allowed to pay the dividend if the Federal Reserve deemed that they couldn't. That's why Obama Geithner came up with that stress test model. So for those who are asking these financial companies to cut their dividend, they're undermining the whole point of the stress test thing that the prior administration came up with. I don't believe 
believe JP Morgan's going to need to cut the dividend. I do think plenty of other institutions will. And so at the end of the day, everyone has to speak to the same reality, which is uncertainty. We don't know where some of these things are going to go. What we do know is there are plenty of companies through conditions of the financial crisis were able to not only continue paying their dividend, continue growing their dividend. We would take that over stock buyback issues any day. Would you avoid the banks, given these worries about the dividend right here? Are there any reasons to allocate money to stocks today in the face of this uncertainty, David? Real quick. Yes, there is. Because of the uncertainty is why people that have the risk appetite and timeline for it should be allocating to stocks. It gives them a better entry point. They have to be careful and prudent. We would not allocate to banks indiscriminately, but we would certainly be allocating to J.P. Morgan. All right, we'll leave it there. David, it's great to get your insights this morning. Thank you, sir. We will see you soon. Thanks, David Branson joining us there. Coming up, you.